what's up guys and welcome back to project z garage today we're working on the the uh q3 um if you saw in the last video we we're having issues with the water pump uh if you guys are interested you know go uh look at the previous video um another issue we had after taking the intake on and off again is we got that 2015 p 2015 error which says that the intake runner uh flaps or outside of whatever the range the sensor is so i know this is a common issue with these tfsi motors uh on the audis and volkswagen and most of the time the only solution is to replace the whole intake manifold uh what while we had the intake off i said let's test the uh vacuum actuator on the side and see if that's really bad or not because it didn't look like the arm was bad so i have a vacuum pump attached to this actuator that moves the flaps once you reach a certain rpm and the engine has a certain vacuum so al's gonna do that as he does that we're gonna look at the flaps and we can see i don't know if you can see that let me get a light it looks kind of dark there we go can you see the flaps oh there we go so as he puts more vacuum, we can see it's working. So I don't think the actuator is bad. It could be the sensor on the side here uh, might have been bad, or it could even be the the wire connection, because you know taking the intake on and off, you could damage this wire. But as we can tell, as far as we can tell, everything looks good with the wires. Nothing looks wrong. So what we're gonna do is. Connect everything back up, put the intake back on, and uh, and see if the error comes back. Maybe the flaps were just stuck uh, when we had it on the last time and it was having a hard time uh, actuating. But worst case scenario, we're gonna have to take the intake off, intake manifold off, and take the whole the, and replace it. Unfortunately, they don't really sell uh, this separately. They do sell the sensor separately, so we could change that but at that point i'm like you know what maybe we should just get the revision to it which is supposed to be better and um seeing that it's a common issue on these these early motors because this is a 2015 idq3 it's just you know kind of one of those things that you might have to do eventually so might as well take care of it now um i just want to do a quick video just to show you guys how you could possibly test it to see if it's if it's the uh, that vacuum actuator on the side or what you can also do is connect a, a probe on the sensor to see if it's reading at all. Or I believe if you have the, the program, the, uh, uh, the software for the computer to do the uh, diagnostics, you could kind of, once everything's back together, actuate it and see what the percentage is, if it's showing a percentage or not, because then that's way to, one way to tell if the sensor is bad or not. Um, but the thing is, you know, it's a lot of work um and most of the time people won't even waste the time troubleshooting it they'll just replace it you could kind of get these pretty cheap online i believe some people said it's like 160 under 200 dollars for like uh the aftermarket ones and and you know do it one time you replace it. it usually comes with all the sensors and everything so that might be you know the best option but if you wanted to test yours it's even just kind of figure out if it's the the arm, this arm here, because some this is what mostly goes wrong. Is this breaks, and then the flaps, and they're not connected to the flaps anymore. So a lot of times they say if you pull on this, and see if it pops out, that means it's broken. Um, the problem is even to change this sensor, I believe you have to still take the intake off because everything is so close, close uh, to the motor, which is kind of the name of the game in this car everything is like kind of re in reach but something blocks it so you have to usually take it all the way off which sucks but guys i think that's gonna just wrap up this short video just showing you what we're dealing with and kind of slowly going through all the troubleshooting on kind of figuring out if we need to replace it or should we just put it back on see what happens i really didn't see any difference in the car's performance which what happens with these flaps or at at a startup they stay closed i believe and then uh, it directs the air a different way and then as you go above like 2500 rpms 3000 rpms it opens up and so that you have more flow so kind of i believe it's supposed to help you get a little more torque down low and then it opens up so you get the power 
on the top of the RPM. I, I mean, it's the daily driver. We really aren't revving the car out. You're usually staying between, you know, 3,000 RPM, 25, 3,000 RPM if you're just cruising. Um, so I guess I haven't really pushed it to see that difference, but, uh, you know, nobody wants to see uh, errors on the, on the dashboard. So we're going to attack it, change out what we need to change out. We're testing what we can, and we're going to go from there. So guys, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. You know what, Al, do you want to rev it so I can show them the arm, the arm on the, the vacuum, uh, actuated flaps? I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, though. But, yeah, so you can see the arm is working, so we know the flaps are opening and closing. Um... Yeah, honestly, I, I I really don't know at this point. All we could do is run the car. I'll run it for another week or two. Let's see if anything happens, if we're good. And we'll go from there.